We're going to keep the fun and games moving, everybody. And this time around, we're going to be playing Jeopardy for the PlayStation. Let's see how we do this game. Oh, yeah. See what happens. There we go, that's more like it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, we're playing Jeopardy for the PlayStation. As part of our May specials. Hi folks, I'm Johnny Gilbert. Okay, set the game up exactly the way you like. What'll it be? Okay, so how many people are out there? We'll just add two computer players. Yes, we will. Player one, what's your name? So, yep. I'm up for a challenge this game. I need a challenge. And who knows? It's not at all impossible that we might hear those infamous words of, that is incorrect. Oh. Perfect. For the PlayStation, that is. From the Sony Pictures Studios, this is Jeopardy! Welcome to Jeopardy! Are you ready for the first round? Yep. Would you like to see the categories? Here goes. Broadway songs, movie costumes, political science, women's novelists, famous couples. Latin quotation. Yeah, boy. Contestant one, get us going. Let's start things off with Broadway songs 100, please. In Paint Your Wagon, the rain is Tess, the fire is Joe, and they call the wind this. What is Maria? Why, yes. You're off to a great start. Thank you. All right, pick again. Uh, Broadway songs for 200. In a Jerry Herman song, this woman's name follows You Charm the Husk Right Off of the Corn. Who is Maine? Player one. Right you are. Oh, yeah. All right, pick again. Could we have um, Broadway songs for 300, please? Track Down This Murderer is sung near the end of this Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. Player one. What is the Phantom of the Opera? That's it, exactly. Broadway songs for 400. All right, pick again. According to a song from Annie, you're never fully dressed without one of these. What's a smile? Player one. To be sure. All right, pick again. In a chorus line, they're the first three words of what I did for love. Player one. 
what is kiss today goodbye to be sure all right all right pick again famous couples 100 Julie Nixon married him December 22, 1968, a month before her father's presidential inauguration. Player one. Who is Eisenhower? Could you be a little more specific, please? I'll say who is David Eisenhower? That's not how you spell Eisenhower. I'll try David Eisenhower. Hope I'm right. That's it. All right. All right, pick again. Uh, famous couples for 200, please. Fire Over England, Vivian Lee's first film with this future husband, ignited their romance. Player two. Lawrence Olivier. Correct. Yep. It's your turn, player two. Let's try movie costumes 100, he says. You could say it was curtains for Vivian Lee when she wore a dress made from drapes in this classic film. Well, another clue Player about one. Vivian Lee, but this is one I know. What is Gone with the Wind? That's it. Player one. Uh, can we do movie costumes for 200, please? When John Travolta played a disco dynamo in this 1977 film, his white suit became a national craze. What is Saturday Night Fever? Yes, indeed. All right, pick it up. Many women bought copies of the white chiffon cocktail dress Liz Taylor wore as Maggie the Cat in this film. Player one. What is Cat on a Hot Tin Roof? Right you are. All right, pick again. For if you want to see this German sex symbol in a gorilla suit, rent the 1932 film Blonde Venus. Player one. I'm going to say, who is Marlena Dietrich? No. Why, yes. All right. You're in first place all by yourself. Let's close it out. All right, pick again. Edith Head said this chic actress helped design her own wardrobe for the 1954 film Sabrina. Who's Audrey Hepburn? Player one. Yes, indeed. All right. All right, pick again. Uh, let's go back. Famous couple for 300. Finance consultant Richard Ney was once married to this actress who played his mother in Mrs. Miniver. Player one. I'm going to say, who is Greer Garson? Right you are. He's the one. All right, pick uh, again. comes for 400. Sir Alexander Corda married this protege in 1939. The same year she starred in Wuthering Heights. Player two. Is it Merle, Merle Oberon? To be sure. Yeah. It's your turn, player two. Now we're two. Political science, 100. All right. In this type of election, voters choose the candidates who will run in a later election. Player two. A primary? Correct. Yeah. All right, pick again. Moving on with political science, huh? The heads of the executive departments are part of this group that advises the president. Hmm. Player three. Could it be the cabinet? Right you are. Could very well be, and it is. Player three. Now we're two. Latin quotations. All right. Shouldn't be a problem here. In his history, Livy wrote, Potius sero quam num quam. Better late than this. Player one. What is never... Better late than never. 
Yes, indeed. Uh, a lot of petitions for cheap energy. Player one, you choose. Virgil saying, La tete anguise and herba is usually translated as a snake lurks in this. Player one. What is the ground? Or the grass, the grass, the grass, the grass, the grass. Let me change it. What is the grass? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, pick again. Uh, Latin quotations for 300, please. Ovid's famous phrase, Tempus edux rerum, means that this is the devourer of all things. What is the time? Player one. That's it, exactly. Latin quotations for 400. All right, pick again. As he crossed the Rubicon, Julius Caesar quoted the proverb, Iacta alia est. This is cast. What's the die? Player one. That's it, exactly. Latin quotations for 500. All right, pick again. Horace's quote, Permite divis cetera, means leave the rest to these beings. Player three. The gods, yeah, I was thinking that. Why, yes. But I didn't want to risk it. Player three, you choose. Well, we're going to move on. Women's novelist, 100. This author of The Fountainhead graduated from the University of Petrograd in 1924. Fountainhead. Player one. Uh, who is Ayn Rand? Exactly. She's the one. Your choice, player. Uh, Women's novelist for 200. Elizabeth Spencer set her novel, The Light in the Piazza, in this country where she had lived in the 1950s. The Light in the Piazza, Player it one. makes sense to me. What is Italy? Let's have replace it with a Y there. What is Italy? Correct. Yes. All right, pick again. Uh, we'll go women's novelist for 300. This Gigi novelist wrote Sherry in 1920, and the last of Sherry in 1926. Player three. Colette? Exactly. All right, player three. Answer? Oh! Player three. Oh, well, 900. All right, good luck. Praise for a long shot candidate for nomination. Polk was the first to win the presidency. Player three. A dark horse, yep. That's correct. All right, pick again. The annual term of the U.S. Supreme Court begins on the first Monday of this month. Player two. October. To be sure. That's the one. Your choice, player two. We have five clues, or four clues left, excuse me. This British actor was Elizabeth Taylor's second husband and Margaret Layton's third husband. Player one. I'm going to say who is well, I'm right. Richard Burton? I hope I'm right. That's wrong. It's not Richard Burton. Player two. Michael Wilding? You are correct. He's the one. All right, pick again. Oh, well. This agency's fairness doctrine was repealed in 1987. Player two? The FCC. That's it? Yep. All right, pick again. Two clues left. Doral Coat Mill, in her book, The Mill on the Floss, resembles Arbery Estate, where she played as a child. Player three. Could it be George Elliott? Why, yes. Could very well be, and it is. And to finish the board. Last one. Ann Tyler is often compared to this female novelist from Mississippi, her favorite writer. Player one. Who is... Ann... No. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Um... All right, I, I gotta take a guess here. I didn't really mean to buzz in, but I'll just say who's Shirley Jackson, but I really don't know. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. My butt! Player three. Eudora Welty? Why, yes. All right, that's the end of the Jeopardy round.
Let's look at the total scores so far. No, well, I am in the lead with $3,700. 2800 for player 3, 2100 for player 2. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for Double Jeopardy. Oh, well. Let's get to the categories for Double Jeopardy. All right. Fictional characters. World universities. Archaeology. Bodies of water. File under H. Films of the 70s. This time, player two will start us off. File under H for 200. Only two inches long, the smallest bird is a species of this. Player one. What is a hummingbird? Exactly. Player one, you choose. I'll take a $4 file under H. At its completion in 1936, this was the world's tallest dam. What's the Hoover Dam? Player one. To be sure. Five hundred eight for six hundred. All right, pick again. The answer is. A oh! Player one. Uh, make your seven hundred. This Dutch seat of government doubles as the capital of South Holland province. Take a look at your monitor. Is it the Hague? Player one. I'm almost certain it's the Hague. That's it. Yes. You're in first place all by yourself. As I should be. Longer well, age right, eight. With modern ones dating from the 1960s, it's a facility for the care of terminally ill patients. What's a hospice? Player one. That's correct. Calendar H1000. All right, pick again. One of Ireland's national pastimes is this stick and ball game similar to field hockey. Player three. Curling? Exactly. Oh. Player three, your turn. World Universities for 200. For several decades, the University of Leipzig was named for this founder of communism. Player two. Karl Marx, yeah. Why, yes. Okay, player two. The temperature and salinity of this smallest ocean vary as the ice cover freezes and melts. What's the Arctic Ocean? Player one. Correct. Body's water to 400. Your choice, player one. U.S. naval personnel in Cuba call it Gitmo for short. What is Guantanamo Bay? One. That's correct. All right, pick I'll again. What is water for 600? It separates Tierra del Fuego from the tip of the South American mainland. What is Player the Strait of Magellan? That's it. What is water 800? All right, pick again. Site of a massive oil spill in 1989, it was named for the third son of King George III. Player one. Uh, what is, um... Prince William Sal? Yes, indeed. All right. All right, pick again. Uh, bodies of water, 1,000. Ciudad Bolivar and Ciudad Guyana are the major cities on this Venezuelan river. Player one. What is the Orinoco River? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, really? Anyone? 
not player three. Just the Orinoco? That's correct. <laughs> Your choice, player three. That wasn't fair. Answer. Uh oh. Player three. Uh oh. Player three. Uh -oh. Yikes. At the beginning of this film, George C. Scott addresses his troops in front of a huge American I know flag. this one. Player three. And so does player three, apparently. Yes. All right, pick again. Yikes. Peggy Sue, That'll Be the Day, and other songs in this 1978 film were sung by its star, Gary Busey. What's the Buddy Holly story? Everyone? Right you are. Uh, Phillips and Sony's What will it be, player one? This 1979 nuclear disaster film, starring Jane Fonda and Michael Douglas, had no background music. Player one? the China Syndrome. That's correct. All right, pick again. Uh, 70s, Phil's at 70s, better place. The world's tallest building, the Glass Tower in San Francisco, is the setting for this 1974 disaster film. Player one? What's the Tower Inferno? Good guess, but that's incorrect. I didn't get to finish. I hit the end button too soon. Ah. That's correct. Player two, what'll it be? I was trying to put the target Inferno, but I hit the end button too soon. The name of this A Christmas Carol character has become synonymous with avarice. Player one? Scrooge. You are correct. Player one, you choose. Those are the 70s, a thousand. In a 1976 remake, this title beast plummets to his death from atop the World Trade Center. Who's King Kong? Player one. That's right. All right, pick again. Uh, fictional character supporter. In this James Dickey novel, Ed Gentry, Drew Ballinger, Bobby Tripp, and Lewis Medluck take a canoe trip. Player two? Deliverance, I believe that's right. Right you are. Player two, it's your turn. Okay, we're gonna try World University's 400. The university of this capital city is the largest university in Algeria. What's Algiers? Player one? Why, yes. World University 600. Player one, you choose. The University of Leiden in this country is the alma mater of Queen Beatrix. Player one. Leiden, okay. Um, what is the, uh, let's say it was the Netherlands. Correct. All right, All right pick again. Pick the right one. World University is 800. The National Autonomous University of Honduras was founded in this city in 1847. What is Tegucigalpa? Player one. That's it, exactly. All right, pick again. Uh, no, uh, World University is 1,000, sorry. Laval University is named for the first Roman Catholic bishop of this Canadian city. Player two. Is it Quebec City? Right you are. Yes, it is. What'll it be, player two? Archaeology for 200. Alabastrons are ancient onion jars often made of this, hence their name. What's alabaster? Player one. Correct. Player one, it's your Archaeology turn. Archaeology for 400. 
It's the term for labyrinthine subterranean cemeteries, such as the ones in Rome. Layer one. What's the catacombs? That's correct. All right, pick again. Archaeology 600. Human sacrifices were once thrown into the cenote, or sacred well, at Chichen Itza in this country. What is Mexico? Layer one. You are correct. All right, pick again. Greek statues of this creature often have women's heads and wings, unlike the monument at Giza. Layer one. What is the Sphinx? No, I'm sorry. No. Layer two. The Harpy? Right you are. Oh. What'll it be, player two? Early in the novel, Jonathan Harker is sent to help this count purchase property in England. Player two? Count Dracula. To be sure. All right, pick again. All right. In this novel, the nearsighted Piggy and sensitive Simon are killed before the boys are rescued. What is the Lord of the Player Flies? One? Yes. Player one. Fictional characters a thousand. This Nathaniel Hawthorne heroine is publicly exhibited before a pillory for three hours. Player two. Hester Prynne. That's right. And to finish the board. He uncovered tombs of Mycenaean kings in 1876, a few years after finding ancient Troy. Player two? I don't think it's Heinrich Schleiman. Right you are. Oh, it is? That's the end of Double Jeopardy. Never mind. Let's take a look at the scores. I have 11,200, player three is 9,600, player two is 7,900. Anything can still happen in Final Jeopardy. Let's see what our category is for Final Jeopardy. Historic Americans. Player two, your wager, please. Player three, could we have your wager, please? Player one, please make your wager. 8,800. Here's the final Jeopardy answer. A statue of him at, say, the Yale's universities. I think it's Nathan Hale. Let's see how everyone did. Thanks, Johnny. Player two, let's take a look at your question. That's right. Yeah. And your wager was? You're in the lead. Player three, your question? Sorry, that's incorrect. Let's see how much it cost you. Yeah, you'll get them next time. Player one, your question? That's right. Sign up for $20,000. This game, I'll see you all for the next segment. That puts you in the lead. Congratulations, player one. You're the Jeopardy champion. We'll see you again for another game of Jeopardy.
Here are the high scores for all the game modes.